Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar. We'll be covering mapping with dashboards. Uh, we'll uh, cover how uh, maps are becoming more and more integrated with your dashboard and how you can utilize them to the best ability uh, for your business intelligence needs. Uh, I always like to start out with our mission statement. To bring an unrelenting focus of value to our customers through a dedication and excellence, integrity, and a desire to foster long-lasting relationships. For me, that allows you guys to know where we're coming from. Uh, we believe in long-term partnerships. Uh, we're not looking for just quick uh, one-off projects. Uh, and we want to be a, we want to partner with you to make sure that you're getting the most out of your business intelligence. Uh, we have been around since 1998. Uh, what that means is before the term was really being used, uh, we were doing business intelligence, uh, whether it be back in the day with Crystal Reports or some custom dashboards in the late 90s, uh, all the way up until today where we have uh, the full business objects uh, 4.0, uh, we've got the high demand, um, we've got all the various uh, ETL projects, you know, the data warehousing, everything that fits into the business intelligence arena, that's what we do. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as experts and you know uh, we'd love for you to test us so if you've got a problem or a project that needs to be completed you know we'd love a call uh, we also have our new uh, instant access bi what that does is puts you uh, not necessarily having a full-time consultant uh, on board with you but you have access to them so therefore uh, for you know a monthly fee or you know hourly setup uh, you can contact an expert in your related pro projects and have access to them. But this allows you, your, your staff and your, uh, your project teams to really utilize uh, our knowledge and be able to use that knowledge uh, to complete, you know, especially one-off and fixes. And you know, if you're trying to do employment yourself but you can't quite uh, get everything down uh, or you don't have necessarily have an expert, we can definitely step in and help out, and this gives you access during your business hours uh, to someone that's going to be able to answer all your questions. Uh, with that being said, let me turn it over to Andrew Kreider, who will be doing our uh, webinar today. Good afternoon. My name is Andrew. I'm uh, head of the Office of Innovation here at WCI Consulting. And what we're going to do today is that we're going to talk about um, geographic data. Um, in Excelsius, uh, let me just go and show my screen here. Um, in Excelsius, what we can do is that we can show many different maps that are possible. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do today is that we're going to come, we're going to show both a map of Europe as well as a map of the United States. And what we can do is we can show there's a number of different maps um, that we can show. Uh, so what we can do is that we can pick from the stock maps that uh, Excelsius gives us. So Africa by county, country, Albania by region, um, Armenia, Asia by country, Asia Pacific. Um, pretty much all of the Asian and uh, European countries. Those are broken down by region. The United States, we have one uh, state that is provided by county, which is California. And another that we're going to show, we can show Canada by province or Central America by country. But for most United States, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to show North America by country. or the USA. So we have this map right here, which is a purely continental map. We can also drag in a US, um, we can also show a US by Alaska and Hawaii as well. Um, and what this allows us to do is this allows us to um, show kind of a heat map of what we're looking at. So what we've done is that we have built 
we've built this dashboard based off a number of different queries, right? And you can see that we are pulling states and state revenues in. We're also going to show product lines in as well. And what we've done is we've built this United States raw, uh, raw file and this Europe raw file here as well. And what we've done is that when we run these queries a web service, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our states down here and it's going to bring in our revenue. And then also to use to create the data for our um, counties, as you can see here in England, as well as our European Union map, what we're doing is that we're pulling in certain revenues from Revenue H. Now what we can do is that we can show this heat map by going in and we can modify this. Um, so what we can do is that we can also, we can do a number of different things. So on the continental map, what we've done is we've set up some alerts. And what we've done is that we've told the map where to alert our file. So from zero to 90,000, from 90,000 to 200,000, we're going to highlight it green. From 200,000 to maximum, we've also hit that as well. Now, what you can also do is that you can also do region keys here for these maps. And for the region for each one of the maps, we give them our region. And then it's asking for what our region key is. So we have data for a very few states using the eFashion database. But as you can see, whatever your data is going in, this is going to be what you can use as your region key. So your region key, in this example, is going to come in from our state right here. And it allows to bring in our revenue, right? And so we're going to match up this, uh, these two items here. And if we go to Europe, we can see the same thing, right? So we can go here. And we can look at the region keys for this as well. And so each one of these regions are for the European Union. But what we can also do is we can also go to our object browser. And we can see our canvas too. And then we also have this item right here. And then England, my region right here. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, bring to front for this. So for our regional map, right, what we can see is that in this region keys, we can also pull back certain counties as well. And you can define whatever counties is provided. Now all these maps are SCV, which means that they're drawn to that standard. And so if you can import your own maps as well, and that's something else that we can do. Now, one of the other components that we've used here is we've also used um, a number of different components. Um, and because of showing this, I've, I've messed up this. We'll go ahead and reload this image in just one minute. These components so that on our display, we can show a number of different tabs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this out real quick. I'm going to reopen it so everything remains the same. Now the great thing about this report here as well is that we can also do, we can also look at how it affects our mobile compatibility. So for example, right now some of these components are not available in our mobile experience. And it's also going to say that there's certain parts of our pie charts and that sort of thing that are not supported either. Now what we can do, and so it also gives us that these queries as a web service are not available to us at all. So when designing these reports, it's important to note that you are going to be able 
to use whatever version you're going to show. So this map right now can only be shown on a desktop. We're going to go ahead and preview. Okay. And so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you another another uh, another one of our Excelsius dashboards here that allows us to um, that is going to show us um, a geographic map in this format with the heat map. Okay, so what we're going to show here is actually a more advanced version of this map. This is actually one of our um, animated features. And as you can see, you can also click on the states and you can pass through these values to open up a new window. And so what you can do is you can pass values in through these state values. And they're showing different versions of their heat colors that we've dictated. What we can do, as you can see, the region keys are right here as well. Right? And this is where the data is being mapped from. We can also dictate where the source data and the destination is going to be. So as you can see, this is posted in this L9 right here, which allows us to select a state and use those values to move along. You can also determine when you insert that data, either over mouse click or mouse over, like any other chart in Excelsius. You can also um, do, do a default selected region. So for example, um, if you wanted to have a region that your clients would, already, would always see a sub-display for, you can do that as well. And then here's our alerts as well. And as you can see, it's set up a minimum and range. And these values are the exact same values that we're going to do in our charts here as well to kind of dictate what our legends are as well. And one of the things that you can often do with this as well is that you can also link from this report to a web report by simply passing in the value and creating an open doc call that allows you to do that. That gives us a, 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 a light understanding of what you can do with maps and the components that are available in Excelsius.